miss you, little buddy. Thank you. All right, so today we will be talking about shipping reptiles. Now there's a few different considerations when you talk about shipping reptiles and there's a few different ways to do it. Um, today I'm going to be shipping a large snake, so a big carpet python. So what I have here is a 15 by 11 by seven inch box. And the first thing I'm gonna to do to this box, which uh, there's a few different ways people do this, but I'm going to poke holes in both sides of them. I like to poke one hole here and one hole here. All right, so doing this will ensure that the heat pack works correctly and uh, the heat pack is actually gonna need, and the animal in general, is gonna need a little extra oxygen in order to work correctly because because this heat pad that is specifically made for shipping animals activates when it actually hits the air. So you need that oxygen flow to make sure that this is working correctly. This is a 40 hour heat pack which will more than cover us as for the shipment. I will drop it off at the facility at FedEx and it will get there by hopefully 10.30 in the destination. At least that's what FedEx personally guarantees. Now, I shouldn't have to mention this, but I will mention it. You can't use hot hands, even though they may have similar packaging. Hot hands get a lot hotter than these guys. These are specifically made not to get as hot as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take tape and tape this pack to both sides. Now there's a few different services you can use to ship your reptiles. I usually use shipyourreptiles.com, but lately Reptiles Express has been a little bit cheaper, so I've been using Reptiles Express. Either way, um, US Fish and Wildlife makes you state what kind of animal you're shipping and the quantity on the side, and you have to have it clearly marked on the side of the box. So this is actually done when you go to checkout for Reptiles Express. It is going to give you this printed out um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife form, which all you gotta do is cut it out and tape it to the side of your box. And then here I have something that you would use for kind of a handwritten version of this form. This is what Ship Your Reptiles gives you if you buy one of their shipping packs. And then this is the form that I printed out via Reptiles Express, which obviously mentions that there's a carpet python in there and there's one animal. I forgot to mention that in order to properly start your heat pack, after I taped it to the top of the box, what I'm going to do is put my snake bag over it. For some reason, you're supposed to start these off in like a towel or non-open air. Apparently, that's the best way to start it. So that's what I'm going to do. But all I'm going to do is put this snake bag on there, you know, during the half hour or so when I'm going to get the shipment ready. Now it's time to tape this to our box. Now the live animal label, I usually put it on the top of the box and then luckily there's a big enough of a box that my shipping label as well as the live animal content designating label can both fit on the top of the box. All right, so make sure that you have an invoice for your animal as far as, um, you know, marking how much the customer paid, you know, or a receipt or something like that. 
Actually, by law, you do need an invoice in there as well as this sheet right here that describes the live animals and I usually put the contents on there as well. As well as the invoice will describe the contents. Also, I will usually print out an extra page with maybe my header on it or the end of my invoice and I will write a handwritten note. Um, I am not big enough as far as breeding and shipping out animals obviously that I haven't talked to everyone who's buying an animal one on one and I feel it's the right thing to do to write them a handwritten note and give them my phone number in case they need anything or have any questions about the animal. I'm also going to attach my business cards to the invoice as well. So I'm going to fold up my invoice, put it in my sheet that says live harmless animal. And now we're pretty much prepared to go get the animal and get the shipment ready. All right, so what I use for packing material is newspaper. All I'm gonna do is bunch a lot of this up. We essentially wanna make a good bed to lay the snake in and so he doesn't have direct contact with the styrofoam sides bottom or top. All right, so what I have here is a male jungle carpet and I didn't really want to sell this guy. Um, I said if I did sell him, I would sell to someone that I trust and I would know where it's going to. And um, quite frankly, I have three adult male carpet pythons. It doesn't make any sense. I thought that this one was a female the whole time I was growing it up. So unfortunately, it just doesn't fit into any plans and um, this gives me an opportunity to move, you know, the water python up into a new enclosure and fit into the previous space that this guy was in. And uh, a guy named Gustavo is getting this guy, so I really, really hope he enjoys him as much as I have. And um, Gustavo's talked to me a whole bunch over Instagram and stuff like that. He watches the channel, listens to the podcast, all that good stuff. I can trust him to be um, transparent with talking to me and I'm sure he'll post pictures of them and he'll really enjoy them and be able to keep them, you know, the way you're supposed to keep carpet pythons that I know that he's for sure going to a great home, to which it's a little bittersweet, but um, I really, really love this guy. He looks great and I hope Gustavo loves him just as much. All right, now the fun part. Let's try to get him in the bag, which I'm sure he's not gonna wanna go into. All right, come on, buddy. So this is a designated snake bag. It's not a pillowcase or anything like that. I find that pillowcases don't have as strong stitching as these bags, as well as they do not have the ties at the end. And he is not going in the bag. All right, this is gonna be difficult. But yeah, you definitely want a design snake bag if you can or like with the cord snakes, since they're so small, they are fragile, I like to ship them out in deli cups. I, would, I wouldn't ship them out in a pillowcase, there's just too much room for them to jostle around, and they're just far too fragile then to put them just in a pillowcase like this. But this animal is obviously being put in, also it's a, something else to consider is, it's just one animal, if we had multiple animals, we may have to make some considerations shipping wise as far as what they're put in and then how they are put in there. But since this guy is alone, he should be fine like this, but I don't know if he's ever going to let go of my arm here. Let's see. Usually you need to find the tip of the tail and then you can unravel from there. They don't really like having the tip of their tail manipulated. So, ah. There we go. And then make a good knot in there. So we will double check it by tying the string below the knot. And then one of the most important steps, if you skip this step, 
your animal usually can find a way to get out the knot here. So um, a good triple check would be to have a zip tie. And then all we're doing is connecting the zip tie underneath the knot. And that is it. So now the only way the snake can get out, which has happened, is they burrow their nose right in the corner of the bag there. And if that stitching is not good enough, they will end up uh, out free in the box. And I mean, I've seen people ship them out free in a box, but that is not the way to do it. That is the wrong call. And here we go, put him right in the middle there. Then we're gonna build a nice house around him with newspaper because we want him to have proper padding from the box being moved around as well as we don't want them to have direct contact with the heat pad. So we want to make sure that there's definitely a layer of newspaper in between the snake and the heat pad. All right. So now what we're going to do is take our top with our heat pack properly activated. So now I've waited for my heat pack to cool down to a balmy 100 degrees. I'm going to just put it with the heat pack facing towards the animal. Put the lid on and then now what I'm going to do is put my, my live animal sheet as well as my invoice and then whether it's marketing materials or your business information on top in there so that when the first thing someone opens it, the first thing they're gonna see is live animal. So you wanna make sure that they know it's a live harmless reptile and what kind of reptile it is. Close this guy up. You really want to make certain that this tape job is good. Um, sometimes I will do an H pattern, which I probably will on this one. All right, there we have it. As you can see, right now I've yet to put the shipping label on it, but honestly, I'm not gonna, sh I'm not gonna shake the box. But you can kind of feel that the snake's not going anywhere. It's packed nice and tight. So obviously the newspaper is not stuffed in here so much that the snake can't move, but it will save it and cushion it for if the package gets jostled around a little. Because honestly, the guys handling these packages, despite what it says, are going to be handling it a little roughly. So now I'm gonna put some finishing touches on this package. So I'm gonna put my shipping label in this, which is a, it's just a cover that you can slip it into, which gives it um, protection basically from the outside elements. What you can also do is put your label on here and put tape on every portion of it. You know, you want to keep it from weather so you make sure that the tracking number doesn't get worn or the addresses and names don't get worn so you know that your pack is going to get to the right place in the right time. Luckily, I'm not going to have to do it the getaway this time. I have this sweet cover that is made exactly for this purpose, so let's do it. I want to make sure that the barcodes are all scannable and visible. I want to make sure that this is done right or else my package will get lost because FedEx are a bunch of pieces of shit. All right. All right, we done did it. Mm, nice. And then to extra ensure we are good to go, what I like to put on is live harmless reptile on every side of it. Now my handwriting is terrible, but I will do my best. And I need to spell things right too. Do you see that I just randomly make things capital like that? Luckily it's on the label. 
Nope, I thought it was gonna come off. But sometimes I just randomly make things capital. Um, I almost never use handwriting. I type on the computer whenever I need things to be put out. So I like am terrible at this whole handwriting thing. So there you have it guys, a full, oh shit. I mean, uh, no, I'm just kidding. This is a different box. So what we have here is a fully packed, ready to go snake. Now what you wanna do is call your FedEx hub. You wanna figure out where your FedEx hub is. Um, FedEx office locations won't take animal packages. If you go there, they will deny you and it sucks. But if you find a hub, hopefully you live near a major city or you can arrange a pickup from FedEx. I like going directly to the hub because or else it's gonna be sitting on a truck for an extended amount of time. What I wanna do is make sure I can control it as much as I can and the FedEx guy doesn't drop it like I just did that fake box. But in a perfect world, I'd go there and I'd drop it off at 8, 8.15, but today I have to work, so I'll probably drop it off at, at about five, but it is better than sitting on the truck forever. So let's bring this out. Hold on, little buddy, we're gonna get there. Listen to that kitty purr. Don't worry, little buddy, 33 minutes. We got this. Sick, dude. At least there's no traffic. I miss you, little buddy. Just drop that off? Yeah. Awesome. First one. Thank you. There's six So that is really it. Um, I'd like to thank Gustavo for purchasing that guy and for giving him a great home and I look forward to what he's gonna do with them. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And if you made it this far, you're on the team.